Well, I've been meaning to talk about these mags for the 351. You know, I, I always read everything I can on these. So I'm digging into forums all the time. And a common thing I hear is don't buy the aftermarket mags that they are junk. But like these 10 round are like $55. Where if you can even find one of the Winchester 10 round ones, they're like 175. You know, so that's, like I say, if you can even find one. But there's a thing about these mags that people don't quite understand, including the people who made this mag. You know, this was all new when Winchester was making, you know, a, a self-loading automatic that that fed with a removable magazine, you know, this was something new. So when they developed these, they came up with a way of making this mag in one piece. You know, the factory mag, you know, in some deep draw method that they developed to make these mags. You know, and looking at it, you know, I couldn't figure out how in the world they did it. I still don't quite understand how they could do that in one piece because, you know, a normal mag, you end up, you got to have a seam someplace. Like here's a seam you can see that's been ground down. This is for, this is the 10 round aftermarket one. But uh, very similar is the one from my Zestava M57. I think this is the M57, yeah. You know, pretty much standard fare, but where it's keeping it in the gun, you know, the mag release doesn't have to be fancy, just has to be some way of clicking it in. And they didn't understand when they made these that on these, the mag release does more than just hold the mag in the gun. These have incredibly strong springs. In fact, the, the factory 10 round ones they claim it's hard to get the 10th round in because the spring is so strong. But what they did, I got this taken apart. Okay, the mag release is here and it, there's a tab in the back that moves when you push this and it sticks quite a ways in there. In fact, it fix, sticks so far in there, it's actually holding the bullets back, the spring pressure. So when you fire the gun, you can actually feel when it kicks this bullet out, when it pulls the next bullet up, it actually has to, to move that mag release just slightly. It'll wiggle as it fires. But these, these are a work of art. These factory mags are just uh, amazing because they even have in the very front here, you can see there's a ball bearing, a little roller that it rides on. And this is a solid, solid piece. It isn't just a bent hunk of metal. So they sit in there square and there's no resistance on the front. And like I say, that, that piece as it comes up, it, it's made so that it moves each time. So you're not getting, you know, the pressure above this piece will stay constant and the pressure downhill will vary as they feed up it'll always be the same up here so you have the same amount of pressure on the bolt because if you had it real strong right off the bat you're going to lock your bolt or at least restrict the bolt travel so it was clever you know but like i say this was all new but when they came out with these reproduction mags they didn't take that into consideration. They didn't realize that it works like an interrupter, that it actually has to move too to, to restrain it. So they put a standard weight spring in. Well, I'll take this apart. You know, it's just a normal spring, enough to push the bullets up. But if you get any resistance, which there will be when this travels up far enough and it hits on that release all of a sudden you've got something solid uh, a lot of times with these as they come they'll fire 
like seven, eight, and then they'll, they'll not pick up the next one because what's happening is that mag release is catching on a follower and there's no pressure holding them up. But like I say, these are pretty standard fare. You know, a little floor plate that slides off, relatively weak spring. And this follower is nothing to brag about. It's just a bent piece of metal. Okay, now here's what I did though. I took and ground this piece down so that it's still the same height down below that release notch because that notch goes in quite a ways. But this way I don't have that resistance on this part. So I don't I don't have that problem anymore. But it does take that modification, knocking this down. You know, you, it'll still feed because you're you're here and you're here, but you won't catch on that mag release. Because like I said, these are very much standard for very much like the the Stava mag. You know, nothing special, but they'll function. The one thing, you know, the, the Stava at least is attached in there pretty solid on the base. So it doesn't come off, it's got a clip in there. Now, these things will come off. There's really not much holding them on there. And then you have the spring pushing it down, so you really have to bang a dent in here, here, or take a vice grip and crimp this, or it will walk that right off of there. I have, I have done that.